Hey guys, it's Coding Jesus, and in this video, we're going to be going over object slicing in C++. So without further ado, let's jump into the code. Okay, so what we have here is quite simple. We have an object of, or a class uh, called base, and in base we have three functions, or we have a constructor and two functions. So we have a constructor that takes in a value and initializes the private member variable value with the value passed in. We also have a function called getValue, which will return this member variable value. Then we have a third function or a second function called getName that's virtual and will return the word base or the string base, okay? Then we have a class called derived and derived extends or inherits from base. Derived has its own constructor that delegates the initialization of value to the base class. So the base class will take care of that. And it also overrides this function called getName from the base class to return the string derived. We're going to be using these two classes to show you what slicing is, how it can be avoided, and some consequences of slicing that you might have not been familiar with. Okay, so what is slicing? Slicing, put simply, and I'll get into an example in a second, is when an, the copy of a derived class is made during an assignment from a derived type to a base type. So what does that mean, Coding Jesus? Can you show me an example? I'll show you an example right now. So let's say we have this object derived called D, initialize it with one, and we have another object type base called B and we initialize it with one. What happens when we assign D to B is that D's class is derived and B's class is the base. When we assign a derived object to a type of the base class, what ends up happening is that a copy of the base class in the derived type actually gets performed. So what happens is that anything that was uh, belonging to the derived type or was part of the derived type really gets sliced off. So let's look at an example. So if we do B equals D here, we have a type or an object of type derived and an object of type base. We are assigning an object of type derived to an object of type base. So a copy of the derived of the base portion of this derived class will actually end up taking place and B will still remain a base class object. Let's take a look at what gets printed when we call get name. So let's see out B dot get name. Remind me later, b.getName. What ends up actually being returned here is base. The reason being is because when slicing occurs, we cannot access the most derived virtual function of that derived type, right? So our derived type here is called derived. Our base type is called base. They both have a get name, right? The get name in the derived and the get name in base. But when slicing occurs, we can re not resolve to the get name in the derived type because this member function is kind of shed off from this object, okay? So b.getName calls the get name in the base class, not the get name in the derived class. But hey, Coding Jesus, I'm assigning the derived type to an object that has a type of the base. I want it to resolve to the function of the, or the virtual function of the most derived type. How do I do that? Okay, so as you can see here, when we do simple assignment, slicing occurs. We can avoid this problem by either using references or pointers. So let's look at references first. What I'm going to do is get rid of this assignment, and I'm going to take a reference to the derived, to the object of the derived type, the derived class here, D, and now I'm going to call get name on B. What actually ends up happening is that derived gets returned. The reason being is because by using references, we can access the most derived class through the virtual function resolution. Okay, so we're accessing the most derived type or the function, the virtual function that belongs to the most derived type through uh, references. Okay, now we can also do the same thing using pointers. So, hey, I don't wanna use a reference coding Jesus, I wanna use a pointer, show me how to do it. No problem. So we're gonna have a type, we're gonna instantiate a pointer of the base class and that object is gonna be called B and we're going to pass it the memory address of the derived type and the object of the derived type's name is D. Now, instead of using a dot, of course, we have to use pointer semantics, and we're going to call get, get name on this base type pointer, and derived gets returned, not base. So as you can see, we are accessing the most derived type or the virtual function of the most derived type through either using pointers or references. Okay, Coding Jesus, I understand what slicing is, but it probably never happens in real life, right? Happens all the time. Let me show you how it happens and how to avoid it. Okay, so let's say we have a function and it returns a string 
and it's going to call get class name, takes in const base object, and it will return object.get name. Okay, we are now going to pass in this derived to this function. So we're going to pass in derived get class name d. What actually ends up happening here is that this function, when it when get name is called, will return base. So it will call get name of the base class, even though we provided an object of the derived class. Why is that? Well, what's going on here is we are taking derived by value and not by reference. So when we pass it into this function, a copy of derived is being made. And because we're not taking it by const reference, slicing occurs and the derived type is pretty much shed such that we only have a copy of the base type. So in here, in this function, in this scope, what we end up happening, what we end up having is we have a object called object and it's of type base, not of type derived. A way to get around this and another reason to also take an object by const reference is to pass in base as a reference. Okay, so we're passing in derived and the parameter type here is base reference. So when get class name is called, what ends up happening is that a copy is not taken, the derived class still is derived in this function, is still of the type derived, and this object will call dot get name, which will resolve to the get name in the derived class. Now I know it's a mouthful, but hopefully I've been able to succinctly and simply explain that concept. Once again, this is just another reason why you should pass objects by const reference when you do not explicitly want to create a copy of an object. Okay, now let's look at another consequence of slicing. We will do so by looking at vectors. So std vector, let's say we have a vector of the base type and we call it class vector. Okay. Now what we are going to do here is push back two objects. So maybe I shouldn't have deleted them. D1 base B1. We're going to push them back into vector. So let's go ahead and do that. Whoops. Okay, so what will happen when I iterate over this vector and call get name? Let's take a look. I'm just gonna call these objects C. And I'm going to print, or I'm gonna call get name on each one of them. What ends up happening is that we obviously, or maybe not so obvious, we get base and base printed out here, okay? Obvious for me because I'm doing the teaching. Okay, so how do we fix this? I mean, I'm passing in a derived type into here. Why is it, why is a base type being created inside this vector? Why is it storing the base type? Well, what pushback will do is it will create a copy of what you pass into it. And because there is no reference to this copy being made, what ends up happening is that the derived type gets sliced and what ends up being pushed back is a object of type base. Okay, now, Somebody that is maybe new to the whole slicing concept and has just watched most of this video will probably say, okay, this is easy. I'm going to pass in or I'm going to hold a vector of type base reference. You can actually do this. The reason being is that the elements in std vector must be assignable and references cannot be reassigned. They can only be initialized. So as you can see here, we immediately have a compiler error. How do we get around this? Well, we've learned to get around slicing with references, but we've also learned to get around slicing with pointers. So let's have a vector that stores base pointers. Okay, and what we will do here is we won't pass in D, because we can't do that. What we will pass in is the memory address of D and the same thing for B. And we will iterate over this with pointer and we will call it with pointer semantics. Because we pass the derived type in first and then the base type, which we should expect to see is derived than base printed. And of course, that's exactly what happens. Well, if you like this video, smash the thumbs up button. It really helps me boost my video on the YouTube algorithm. If you didn't like this video, double tap the dislike button to show me that you hated this video twice as much as you would have liked it. And of course, subscribe and hit that bell so you get notifications as to my new videos when they come out. Share this video if you found it useful. Help your friends out. Thanks for listening, guys. Cheers.